in verse 1, the Bible says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which also, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not right to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Heavenly Father, Lord, teach us, teach us, Lord, to be Christ-like. Lord, and, and, and we know that, that you're spiritual and we're carnal, but you've indwelled us with that spirit, Father, and empowered us as we uh, try to conform, be conformed through your spirit to your image, Lord, and Lord, don't give up on us. Keep working on us. Every day, Lord, let me uh, uh, grow spiritually, Lord, and let me uh, suppress those passions and lusts and desires of the flesh, Lord, and the carnal things and the, the envy and, and all the craziness, and the pride and the arrogance and the haughtiness of this life, Lord. Lord, I pray that I would be conformed to your image. Uh, help us to learn who you are and learn about you and to praise you and glorify you and lift you up. And when we're weak, Lord, we know that you're strong, Father. And ask for help today. Thank you for each one who has come out today, every home represented. And we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Here a message to the church, Apostle Paul. And it's, of course, God's plan... That we be Christ-like. That's what he wants us to be. The Bible says, For whom he did foreknow, he did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son. And for many of us, for most of us, maybe all of us, that's a battle. That's a battle to be Christ-like. Because as soon as we think we're coming close to arriving, that flesh will rear its nasty head and we'll have a carnal thought or a little temper tantrum or, or something. Someone will cut us off in traffic. Something will happen that will remind us that the closer we get, the further that we actually are because we're carnal. And But one day this body is going to be redeemed and we won't have to have that battle. But now we fight the fight. And God is trying to bring this flesh in to subjection of the Spirit so that we might walk with Him, be like Him, Love like Him. Talk like Him. Pray like Him. Be like Him. That He might be the, Bible says that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. In 1 Corinthians 15, 49, and the Bible says, And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. My, 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 there's a song, the, an old bluegrass gospel song, I'll have a new body, praise God, I'll have a new life. It'll be good to get rid of this body of flesh that is so tempted and so uh, full of craziness. If you think this carnal flesh isn't crazy, look at the world today. Strife, envy, wars, a sexual perversion, everything crazy because of this body of flesh and the weakness of it. Uh, but if we look at the image of our Savior Jesus Christ, we'll find an image of humility, of sacrifice, an image of long-suffering. I remember researching Moses, why, why God called Moses to deliver that nation of Israel. And the only thing I found was that, that said the man Moses was the meekest man on earth. That's a great virtue with God is a meek and gentle spirit. These six things that I hate, pride, arrogance, haughtiness, a proud look, a haughty spirit, feet that are swift to shed blood. 
things that God don't like. In fact, it would be safe to say that the image of Christ would, uh, you would, I would say, would bear all the fruit of the Spirit. You look over in Galatians 5, 22, and it talks about the nine various fruit of the Spirit. So this is what the Spirit produces. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law, the Bible says. Now it says in our text here, it said, But made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant. One of the things that we have to learn, that a Christian should learn, is that to not be too impressed in the presence of celebrity. That's sometimes tough to do, you know. And uh, I remember a, a few weeks ago I went to the National Drags and my, my friend who I've known for, you know, five or six years is now a big star. Hey, I know him. Hey, hey, how you doing? Austin Prock, he's up for Rookie of the Year at the Top Fuel Drag, drag Racing from John Force Racing. Man, there are crowds of people around him. Had the, the pits there, crowds of people. I've been around uh, Grand Ole Opry stars, and you'll say, well, I'm hanging out with him. Oh, that's good. I used to sit backstage, and me and uh, Barbara Mandrell would sit and drink lemonade and talk about all kinds of things, hang, hang out with that crowd. I remember meeting Jimmy Dean. Remember Jimmy, Jimmy Dean has a sausage, and he's been dead now for years. But uh, My Uncle Harley was with Osborne Brothers. They were playing at the Cincinnati Gardens, and Jimmy Dean was there. He headlined the show. And I went backstage, and because of my uncle, I was able to wiggle, wrangle my way. But I thought, it was, I thought I was important hanging out with those people. you got to watch out for that stuff. I'll never forget Jimmy Dean when I met him, you know, by a teenager, you know. He said, my pleasure, son. I thought, boy, that's cool. My pleasure, son. Jimmy Dean. But you can't be too enamored with that. You got to kind of, uh, God, our Lord made himself of no reputation. That's hard for us to do. We want to be in the spotlight. In the spotlight. That plagued me for years in the music business. And it's a weakness rather than a virtue. Mm. So, if that is the image, it says, but he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. So if that is the image that we as Christians are supposed to attain to, where are the Christ-like Christians? Verse 5, the Apostle Paul admonishes the Philippians. He says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Uh, how many Christians do we know that... that Say they have the mind of Christ. I want to. 1 Corinthians 2, 16. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Into it, but we suppress it. If that spirit, we, we listen to the carnal and we suppress that still small voice of the spirit. And after a while... That, that you, don't, you don't hear the Spirit. You suppress it long enough, you just don't hear it anymore. It appears that uh, much of Christianity, if they certainly have the mind of Christ, has either lost its mind when it comes to being Christ-like, or they've simply allowed the flesh to rule the mind. Somebody's got to be in charge. Somebody has to be in, in your home. Someone has to be in charge. Well, we all do this together. Now, someone's got to be in charge. I remember having a girl, and I was a juvenile probation officer, and I had a 14-year-old girl, girl sitting there, and, Amy, you've got to make that girl mine. And she said, well, in my home, we do not have a military dictatorship. And I said, yes, you do. And right there's the dictator, that 14-year-old daughter. Right there she sits. 
I don't know why I brought that up. But that's the way we are with God. We don't want God to rule in our hearts and in our minds. We want to be in charge. Mm. Instead of mind uh, over matter, it's kind of like matter over the mind. But the Bible says, bringing every thought into the captivity of the obedience of Christ, to the obedience of Christ. That's what God wants you to do. That's called the perfecting of the saints. It's called uh, uh, being predestinated to be conformed to his image. Now, it begs the question, is, is the Lord's church, which we're part of, are we really Christ-like? Are we making a poor effort at it? I remember Bluegrass Festival once, the sound was all messed up. And Ralph Stanley, Dr. Ralph Stanley up there and said, I don't know who's doing the sound here today, but they're doing a very poor job of it. <laughs> Man, that's quite a put down. I'm wondering what the Lord sees at church. I don't know <laughs> what the church is doing down there, but they're doing a very poor job of it. Church wide. Neither hot nor cold. Man, they've gone in 40 different directions away from the mind of Christ and the Word of God. And I'm not talking about Christians who are, are uh, just are pious and want people to think that they're, uh, they're Christ-like because they're religious. And, and, and churches worldwide are full of those kind of having a, a Uh, Luke eleven thirty nine, 39, uh, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto him, Now do you Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. Wow, what a thing for a Lord to say to the religious leaders. Why would he, in the world would he say that? Why do you think so many of our, our, our war-hardened veterans To organize religion. Why is that? Because they can see through a lot of show. They've they've seen those soldiers. They've seen those soldiers who were real good at parade, look good at parade, but in If God can change your heart, then you'll begin to grow and become Christ-like. I heard an old black preacher uh, say once that God don't work from the top down. We, I think one of the things, I, I agree with a, an old preacher that I knew, he's dead now, but he said what happened to the churches years ago, these Downtown churches, a fellow would walk in with a three-piece suit on, own some kind of business, and they figured the guy had some money, so they had to make a deacon out of him. Instead of calling spiritual men, they'd call somebody they thought had a few bucks, and after a while, the churches were being run by a lot of unspiritual carnal folks, and the church, churches went downhill. But you know those uh, war-hardened veterans, uh, they, they resist the church a lot of times. It isn't because of some Bible doctrine they disagree, but it's more likely because the churches are filled with feigned piousness, humility that really isn't humility. There's a song we do, and it, it says, Lord, keep me humble. Well, that... That's a man that thinks he's humble. I always change the word of that, Lord, make me humble. I need to get there. I, I don't consider myself having arrived and need, need you to keep me. I, I, I need you, God, every day to make me humble. And let me see myself and my weakness and my weakest state and trust in you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Mm. A lot of men been around the block a few times, can see right through that, 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 that crowd. See right? The Lord said in Matthew 15, 8, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. 
Matthew 15, 16, and Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. You know what defiles the man? It's a heart. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with, and they were um, upset with him because he ate with unwashed hands. It said, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. See, the problem uh, with the church today is the same problem that they had 2,000 years ago when the religious crowd crucified Christ. A religion works on a man, like I said, from the outside in, while Jesus Christ works on a man from the inside out. Religion wants to clean up the outside of the cup. Wants you to look good, but God wants you to be good. Wants you to have a tender heart, a Christ-like heart. Religion will try to convince you that if you quit smoking, cussing, chewing, drinking, then you're on the right track. Hey, you can do all those things in the flesh, still have a heart as cold and as indifferent Biblical Christianity is not like world religions. In fact, most religions oppose biblical Christianity. Biblical Christianity is in a man. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. My. Not in a system. Re, uh, religion is uh, found in systems of impressing God with how good you are, trying to salve your conscience by showing God how religious you are. That's what the Pharisees did. Biblical Christianity can only be accomplished by the new birth. Uh, the Lord said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. A new seed. God puts that in your heart. John 3, 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In Ezekiel 36, 26, the Lord said, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. God wants your heart. You see, God's will is that you be conformed to the image of his son. And to be conformed to Jesus Christ, it begins with a new birth from the heart out. Psalms 5.15, correction, 51.5. Behold, David said, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. You can do a whole bunch of religious things and still be lost. You can, uh, like that prodigal son, you can sweep out that hog pen. You can clean it up and spray a little uh, perfume on it. It's still going to be a hog pen. Hey, we're not sinners because we sin. We're, we sin because we're sinners. Needs a new heart, a new birth. The psalmist said that every man at his best aid is, is altogether vanity. Listen, uh, I, can preach, I can preach on long hair. I can preach on short skirts, tattoos, earrings. Uh, in men, uh, I can preach those things till next Christmas. And that stuff will do absolutely zero in pointing someone to Jesus Christ. All we do with that kind of stuff is try to show that we're better than you or I'm better than you are because I don't have I don't have that tattoo here. That means obviously I'm a much better Christian than you are. Duh. See, that's how we think. That's flawed thinking. We need to give someone the knowledge of our Savior, Jesus Christ. A few years ago, you'd see those bumper stickers, WWJD. What would Jeff do? No, it's what, what, what would Jesus do? We've seen, that's a fair question. Uh, what about uh, WW 
J.W., what would Jesus watch? Hmm. Never thought, never looked at it that way. What would Jesus say? Uh, maybe, where would Jesus go? Bob Jones Sr. had a saying, what you would do in the sight of God, you have done. Hmm. Can you imagine watching TV in the evening and the Lord sitting down at the end of the couch? Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, I lo- I don't, Lord, I don't know how it got on that channel. I never watched that show. That's my wife. That's one of her programs. I don't like it. I don't watch that filthiness. Yeah, yeah, them Bengals. How about them Reds? I think I've been paying for that regional sports channel for six months, and it's been off. They took it off the air. Jeff, did you get your money back from that regional sports? I never did. Oh, well. Boy, and it's a shame as good as they did this year. I mean, anyway. But you imagine the Lord sitting at the end of the TV. Can you imagine the Lord sitting next to you when that fella cut you off in traffic? <laughs> Lord, oh, Lord, did you see that fella? Some people, they just cut you off. (laughs) Wouldn't we change our... Well, let me move on. Do you think maybe the Lord's presence would cramp our style? The psalmist said, Psalm 17, 15, As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness will you you want to be like him how much how much you want to be like him that much (laughs) how do you how much I love you I love you that much I want to be like you Lord that much Mm. Lord said he was meek and lowly in heart is that who you are are you meek and lowly in heart Man, don't get me wrong. I've seen folks, I've seen folks in this church that God has done a flip-flop with. I'm one of them. I'm one of them. God has flip-flopped. It's a, only God can do that. Now, when I think of somebody meek and just meek as can be, I think of Graydon Johnson. This man would fight a buzzsaw at the drop of the hat, and he'd drop the hat. He was a union steward for Chrysler. He... God doesn't work in you, Graydon. I'd say that line's still out there, but it's way on further down than it used to be, isn't it? Way down. Me too. What's that about? God will still do it if you'll let him do it. If you won't huff up. Soul up, as they say, down in the hills. You let God do what he needs to do to conform you to his image. Don't resist him. Don't fight him. That guy cuts you off in traffic. Don't snarl up and give him a little salute. Start cussing at him like a 30-year Navy man. You've got to learn that. The Spirit of God has got to teach that, and it has to come from the heart. I better hurry. And the, Lord, uh, the Lord gave himself sacrificially for others. Do you do that? Have you sacrificed anything forever for, for others? Have you done that? Uh, 1 Peter 2, 23, uh, almost done. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. Is that you? How about someone... Uh, Huh. somebody gets a, a promotion at work you thought you should have had. How do you react to that? Hmm. The fellow says, hey, uh, I'm good. I'm doing okay. Yeah, how about that? How about that leggy blonde at work that walked past you the other day and you couldn't take your eyes off of her? And then you got a little whiff of that perfume. I'd say you were probably real Christ-like on your... Man, we're a mess. It takes... <laughs> It takes God. Yield to him. Being confident, Paul said, of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. 
Then Proverbs 4.23, keep thy heart for with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Proverbs 23.26, my son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. Have you given him your heart? Has the Spirit broken your will? Are you allowing the Spirit of God to conform you to the image of Jesus Christ? Everyone stand up. Brother Gosmar, if you'll come this way, over this corner. Jeff's going to take over the invitation. And uh, we're going to have a baptism, have a song of invitation. Joyce, if you'll come to the piano. Nick.